Hi, Jay Smith from Model Aviation and Park Pilot Magazines. We're here at Dubrow, and I'm here with Jim Broberg, who's going to give us a tour of the facility. But before we do that, let's go over a little bit of history with Dubrow. Hi, Jim. Hey, Jay. Welcome. So tell us a little bit about Dubrow. We know you started in 1959 with the Quick Clip. It was your father that started the company. Well, he started in 1959 with a Quick Clip, as you said. Uh, it was the one idea. He was a pattern maker, had this one idea, started making it at night. And I think he ran an uh, uh, ad in one of the magazines at the time, and it got to where he couldn't handle the volume. It became so big that he quit his full-time job, and the uh, company's still here today, 58 years later. This uh, particular building was built in 1967, and uh, we doubled the size of it in 1982. We're at uh, 40,000 square feet. All right, Jay, this is an area, this is all our finished product. It's uh, ready to ship to our distributors, who uh, then in turn uh, you know, uh, ship it to the uh, hobby shops all over the world. Um, we've got probably somewhere in the 1,200 items that we manufacture. Most of the products right here in our factory, and we're going to get into it here just in a little bit and show it to you. Well, we're walking by some familiar products here. I see wheels, I see fuel tanks, and uh, it's just not RC products. You have archery and fishing products, correct? We do. We, uh, we have three divisions to the company, and uh, we're a little bit diversified. This is some of our production area here. Uh, we've got all kinds of drilling and tapping for our collars, blind nuts, uh, our quick clips, all the... Uh, slitting of the brass tubes. Uh, we've got uh, for all our flex cable setups, the uh, stranded cable cutters. We've got uh, straightening the wire for push rods, thread rolling. Uh, we've got uh, blow molding, injection molding, uh, die cutting, uh, everything. So we've got a machine running right here. What's that doing? This one right here is doing, uh, we're cutting little small pieces of silicone tubing that you put on like your pla uh, plastic clevises. Cutting little quarter inch pieces. Uh, just runs automatic all day and cuts a whole bunch. A lot of the equipment that we have here, we've actually had to build ourselves. There was no production machines that you could just go out and buy. So uh, some of the team here, you know, designed it and we built it all in house. This is thread rolling. Um, on your push rods, the threads that are on there, they're actually thread rolled. What that means is you're taking the wire and actually squeezing it to create the threads versus cutting the threads. A cut thread is not nearly as strong as a thread rolled thread. So unfortunately, again, this isn't running today, but it is fully automated. Drop in here, drop there, it'll fall into a tub down there, and uh, it's a really slick unit. All right, now we're gonna go into injection molding. And uh, we mold pretty much all of our parts right here. You know, again, more of the uh, injection molds, more plastic dryers. Um, here we can see a part right here. These are uh, over here. These are our heavy-duty ballings being molded right now. Come out of the press, they come up the conveyor, and they uh, mold it on the runner. Now what's one important, when you buy a part uh, made out of plastic, we use all virgin material. What that means is it's first time, brand new material. One of the dangers of, this is called a runner. When you regrind this, you're losing some of that strength. Now, a lot of times we get calls on uh, guys will say, I broke this part on this airplane I bought, and it's because it was a, a product that was made offshore. A lot of times the plastic used in offshore models, I would be guessing it's not virgin material, it's regrind, and uh, the, the parts are more brittle. We make sure and go the extra effort to make sure we deliver a quality product. Well, I think it's important to point out too, as, as people can see here, is that everything's made right here, just outside of Chicago, and not only is it made here, but if you want to make any changes to it, you can implement it immediately. That's right. If uh, you know we get a large order for something and we don't have it, we'll, we'll put it in that day and start making it. I think we talked about this earlier. You're making about 1,000 to 1,200 parts here, correct? We are. Yeah, we are. And uh, in, in, a, in a, a product, there could be 10 different parts. So Mark, Mark is taking when we uh, mold the hubs right here. You can see this is the runner. And we have to actually drill that hole out. Mark's just drilling the hole, making sure it's perfectly centered and true. Jim, this looks like a fuel tank to me, but it's got a little extra uh, plastic on it. Tell us about that. All right. This is how it comes out of the, the uh, machine like this. And I know when you buy it, it doesn't look like this. But, of course, all this comes off. But this is the neck right here. And what we'll do is actually run this through a table saw, cum that, and then trim the uh, where you put the uh, stopper in there. We've never had, we've sold, I don't know how many fuel tanks, maybe a million. I don't know. 
but we've never had one failure where I've heard of many tanks splitting. Yeah. And guys call because their fuel all is inside their fuselage and they want to get a better tank. And uh, again, we've just never had one problem. That is the benefit of doing it the way we do it. I mean, you guys put up your airplanes, you spend a lot of time and money getting your airplanes in the air and, and you don't need a inexpensive part to uh, fail on you. And I mean, it calls all the time. A guy will have a clevis break or whatever on an ARF and uh, want to replace it. A stupid little part like that and uh, can cost you the entire airplane. So we try to make quality and that's what we do. Got a bucket of parts here. Can you tell us what's going on here? Yeah, these are our axle shafts. This is a screw machine part. And then what we do is we take and cut music wire to a certain length. And then around this press right here, uh, Kelly will show you, we'll press the actual screw machine part into the axle shaft. That's the strongest way you can do it. Um, you know, that way, otherwise, if this is all screw machined out of one, number one, this wouldn't be hardened as much. But then you'd have a really weak point on there. So by pressing the two together, we create the strongest axle shaft that you can make. And, you know, we've seen a lot of machines, and, and you mentioned that, that a lot of these machines have been developed here at Dubro, correct? That's correct. I mean, this is something you can buy standard, but again, all the tooling that you attach to it and the fixtures, we have to build in-house. So, Jim, I think what's being made here is going to be familiar to many modelers. Tell us a little bit about this. All right, these are our quick links. What we're doing here is we're taking this little rivet, uh, pin, I should say pin, and we are putting it into the clevis. And right here, this machine, as it indexes over, is actually riveting the head on there. So secure, you're not gonna have it come out on one of our clevises. Um, again, this equipment didn't exist. We had to build everything here. So, you know, with this, with this hobby, there's just, not only are we modelers, we're building the equipment to make the stuff for the model, so. This looks pretty efficient, the way you're doing this here. It is. Um, it just, you know, it can crank, I don't know, like 12,000 pieces a day. Um, goes nice and steady, pretty much. The uh, operator just keeps up with the machine, so. Okay, Jim, so we talked about that Dubro also makes archery products, so we're making a product right now uh, for your archery line, so tell us a little bit about that. We do, our archery line is called Pine Ridge Archery, and what we're doing here, this is one of our newest products for 2017 called the quick stand and what it is uh, just like in, in modeling you guys have your flying events in archery they have the shooting events and uh, when they're at when they're uh, at a shooting event a lot of times there's time between targets where you gotta wait so this is called a quick stand it mounts right on the limb it's completely adjustable the legs are adjustable for the different length of the limbs and uh, it makes it so you can just put your bow down this is your personal bow so tell me about the other Dubro products that are on this bow all right well, this is what we call a kisser button. This is for anchoring up in the corner of your mouth. This is a string loop, which you hook your mechanical release to. These are called wishbones, and they are vibration dampeners on the string, because there's a tremendous amount of vibration on a bow. This is a wrist sling, which your hand goes through like that. And this is called a stabilizer. Again, balance, just like in an aircraft, you have to have balance on your bow. You want it perfectly balanced in your hand. Same principles. So now we're going to walk down into an addition on the building, correct, Jim? Yep. We built this in 1982. It's an additional uh, 20,000 square feet. This is where we keep a lot of the products that have been molded up here or produced. Uh, they're sitting down here for either packaging, uh, mainly packaging. We also have a print shop, and uh, I'll show you also how we make our tires. Jim, everybody knows about Duro tires, but tell us a little bit about how they're made. All right, well, this is our rotational molded tire. Uh, it's a foam tire. Uh, it's a two-part foam. Unfortunately, today this equipment isn't running because we're actually rebuilding it. There's a new material out. We're going to be able to produce these about three times as quick, so we're pretty excited about that. Um, but here are some of the ones that we just finished from the older equipment. We do the vintage tires, the cub tires, the uh, treaded style military tires. And uh, I'll take you right over here. I'm going to show you our original T-Series and R-Series. Those are the, the tires that actually have the air in them. Let me show you how those are made. All right. The tires we're talking about, again, they're, air, they're they've got the air filled in them. Kind of like when you're a kid, you play with creepy crawlers. It's very similar to that. What we're going to show you is then the equipment. You know, again, this equipment didn't exist. We had to build it. Um, I'll pop a mold in here in a second. Actually, over here, I'll show you. Our filling, if you come over here, kind of like you're a kid with creepy crawler stuff. That's what it reminds me of. You fill the mold halfway with the material. There again, he's filling the other one. And this is a double head unit, so he's going to make two tires on each head that's in the machine. When he loads the tires on, right now these gears 
are in neutral. So when he gets the mold on there, she puts it on. So right, right now we're neutral. As we get up in here, the tires, the uh, molds are gonna start spinning this way and this way. Go up through this oven, which is at about 700 degrees. If it comes through, it takes about 20 minutes to go continuously around. When it comes out on this end, it goes through a water chamber to cool the molds. When they come out, they're uh, you know cool to the touch. We pop them out of the mold, we put the hubs in them, and we're all set. And obviously, you sell a lot of wheels, so I'm guessing that you keep these machines pretty busy. Yeah, they're running pretty much all the time. So we've just gone on a tour of Dubro and saw about 1,200 products, not only RC products, but we've seen archery products and we've seen fishing products. And I really appreciate you taking the time, Jim, to show us around, uh, being someone that's used Dubro products for nearly 40 years. It's really exciting to see how things are made. And obviously, it's also exciting that they're made right here in the United States. And for people who want to purchase Dubro products, obviously, we're asking them to please go to their local hobby shop. But if that's not available to them, if they don't have a local hobby shop in their town, how can they get Dubro products? You know, you're welcome to come online to Dubro.com. Uh, again, it ships right from the factory. We've got everything in stock, and we generally ship the same day. So, quick service. Well, thank you so much for your support of Model Aviation and also the AMA, and we appreciate you taking the time to give us a tour today. Thanks so much for coming and visiting us. We're excited to have you.